This is Susan Manning Middlecott, one of the country's outstanding educators. She was born into one of the wealthiest and most respected families in New England. A precocious child, she excelled in everything. Her school career was the talk of the state. Her grades were the highest in local history. Her college career was even greater. And as a result, she won her Bachelor of Arts, summa cum laude, her Master of Arts, and finally her Doctor of Philosophy. Having learned, she decided to teach. This she did brilliantly until interrupted by the war, in which she served with devotion and courage until the victory was won. After the war, she undertook the task of rehabilitating French war orphans, for which she received the official gratitude of the French government, a singular honor bestowed on few women during the war. When she returned home, she found herself somewhat of a national figure, and a few short years later, she was appointed dean of Benton College. Interviewed near the close of her first year as Benton's dean, Miss Middlecott expressed her principles when she said, there is no room for romance in a career. Oh, I'm afraid I've been misinterpreted, Professor Simon. What I meant was, there's no room for romance in my career. Here, but... next season's schedule, we'll see that they get to the printers, and will you tell the senior prom committee I'll be glad to meet with them at 4 p.m.? Very well. Thank you. Miss Middlecott, uh, it's a good article, but I'm afraid they didn't capture the real you. Oh, the real me is very elusive. Miss Middlecott, uh, in spite of your theories, I... Well, I've always hoped that maybe our relationship could be a little different from that of a professor and the dean. Well, you see what time says. No room for romance. And uh, time uh, marches on. Good morning, Miss Middlecott. Good morning, Professor. Yes, this is Susan Middlecott. Cold, aloof, wide awake, living in a world of her own creation. Little dreaming this transatlantic plane carries someone who may disrupt the calm dignity of her peaceful existence. One equally calm, dignified, wide awake. I'm sorry to disturb you, Professor Stevenson, but we're in. Oh, thank you, thank you, mate. Very much. Oh. <laughs> Look, fellas, there's Lucille Ball. Fellas. Hi, Lucille. Hi there. Hiya, fellas. How did you like working abroad? And how about a few pictures? Oh, yes, thank you. All right, boys, I'm ready. This is our best side. Now make it good. Oh, mister, you spoiled the shot. Can you step back, please? Sorry, right, Miss oh. Ball. We'll have to do it again. That's all right. How about a little cheesecake, Miss Ball? Well, okay, if you insist. I'm okay, sorry. That's quite all right. Oh, Professor, would you mind holding my oh, not coat? not at all. That way in my hat box, huh? Thank you. Sally, you remember the Professor. Good morning, Professor. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. How's this, boys? That's swell. Excuse me. You're here to photograph an astronomer. Astronomy is the study of heavenly bodies, isn't it? Yes. You study your heavenly bodies. I'll study mine. <laughs> okay, grab it. One more, please. Well, One more, Miss Ball. for me, too. All right, shoot. Thanks, Miss Ball. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a million. See you again. Bye, Joe. Thank you, Miss Ball. Well, oh, oh, thank you, Professor. You've made the trip most enjoyable. Your subject is so interesting. Well, I somehow feel I've been devoting my time to the wrong kind of stars. <laughs> well, I do hope you can come to California this trip. I know you'll love it. Well, I'm sure I would. I've heard so much about it. But tell me, is it true that everybody in California sleeps under a blanket at night? <laughs> Why, Professor, how could all of us get under one blanket? <laughs> Bye now. Uh, Professor Stevenson, I'm Teddy Evans of the Pomeroy Lecture Oh, how Bureau. do you do? How do you do? It's nice to know you. Do you mind posing for a picture for us? Picture of me? Yes, for the newspapers. You see, the country's all agog over your arrival. Well, I can't imagine why, but if you insist, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Take it, boys. Oh, just a minute. Uh, do you like me as I am, or do you prefer cheesecake? <laughs> Very funny. Take it. <laughs> yes. You're in Boston tonight. The weekend's free. Then New Haven, then Providence, and then you're in. Don't mind me, Professor. But Boston, New Haven, Providence, I... Please remember, I'm a stranger to America. Oh, don't worry, we'll find him. We? Miss Evans will accompany you to handle all the publicity angles. But my lectures are already contracted for. I don't see the need for publicity. Professor, <laughs> astronomy is a pretty dull subject, even from you. We've got to do something to, uh, gussy it up a bit. Gussy up? Uh, give it the tinsel routine. 
The only angle I can think of is your war record. My war record? The commando stuff I read about. You know, you're quite a guy. Do you have many scars? Mr. Pomeroy, please. Oh, don't be bashful. You don't have to show them to me. Oh, I wouldn't mind showing them to you. But I don't want you to use them for publicity. I refuse to capitalize on my war record, and I forbid any mention of it whatsoever. Now, I have some clippings here from my last British tour. You might be able to find something in them. Although I'm afraid I'm going to be awfully hard to gussy up. Well, I need something for the afternoon papers in Boston. If there's anything here, I'll phone it in. Don't mind me, Professor. Oh, by the way, before I catch this train for Boston, do you think I'd have time to go to Coutet's, the jewelers? Slumming so soon? Well, no, I have a little errand, you see, and it shouldn't take more than a minute. Oh, we have plenty of time. We're not flying up till after lunch. Do you want to go now? Well, would it be too much trouble? Oh, not at all. Well, thank you. Yes, I remember this locket well. It was bought uh, for Miss uh, Middlecott by her father. This was some time ago. I'm sure we have her address. <laughs> ah, here it is. Susan M. Middlecott. Her address is uh, Benton, Connecticut. That's a college town, a couple of hours this side of Boston. A girl's college. Near Boston. Well, perhaps I could take the train to Benton this afternoon and meet you in Boston in time for the lecture. Oh, no, you don't. You're my baby, and I'm not letting you out of my sight. But this is something personal. I'd like to attend to it alone. A girl's college, naturally. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm telling you, there's nothing in these. We don't get an angle. You can put this tour on ice. Here I am, flying to Boston an hour, and what have I got for the papers? Well, you could have had lunch with him. He would have opened up. We had lunch. Some lunch. Him, cheese, sandwich, glass of milk, and a timetable. Me, coffee, and fingernails. Wait a minute. Susan M. Middlecott. Susan M. Middlecott. Susan M. Middlecott. Susan M. Middlecott, boss, I've got it. Got it? A gold locket given to her by her father and then given to... Boss, I've hit the jackpot. What are you doing? I'm going to make this a bigger romance. Romance? Than... Who'd be interested in a romance between an astronomy professor and a college dean? Oh, but this is a very unusual woman. Professor Stevenson happens to be the skeleton in her closet. Now, if we rattle the bones a little bit... Hello, Walter. Oh, I'm so glad I got you. I'm going to give you something exclusive, something you can really spread your wings on, on one condition. It has to make the late afternoon paper. Lemon, Father? Lemon, please. And three lumps. Oh, are they the small cubes? Six. Mother, what's a rendezvous? A what, darling? A rendezvous. Here, let me see it, Louisa. Where's a rendezvous? That's rendezvous. Susan, this is wonderful news. Professor Alex Stevenson, the noted British astronomer, made no secret of the fact that his heart belongs to Susan Middlecott, celebrated dean of Benton College, upon his arrival today from England. The dean, who has stated publicly there was no room for romance in her career, could not be contacted for a statement. Uh, well, give me that. Well, congratulations, my dear. And I might add, at long last. But I'm sorry to disappoint you, Father, but there's no truth whatsoever to this article. The man's a complete stranger to me. Oh, come, come, Susan. Even if you didn't tell me about him before, I'm glad that you finally realize a woman isn't complete without a man. A home and children. I have a home. I have Louisa. What more do I need? No, no, I mean a child of your own, dear, not adopted. Father. Oh, I love Louisa as much as you do. You know that, Susan. Of course, it's perfectly obvious. This is some man giving a stupid lecture in Boston wants to use my name for publicity. Oh, my dear, a perfect stranger wouldn't do that. What are you going to do? Give me the railroad station, will you, please? He's not the only one that's going to be speaking in Boston tonight. He oh, hello. Hello, this is Dean Middlecutt. When is the next train to Boston, please? Oh, no. Yes, this is important. Uh, oh, could you? Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I'll stop this before it goes any further. Well, I don't know why you want to see this man in person unless... unless it's... No, Father. It isn't. And I wish you'd stop trying to play Cupid. You have the right shape for it, but your aim is bad. 
Well, I think, my lady, that's protest too much. Grandpa? Yes, dear? What does Rendezvous mean? It means your mommy is going to meet a man. Doesn't she want to have a Rendezvous? Well, I don't know, dear. You women are very hard to understand. Is he going to be my new daddy? Well, it sounds promising. Young, handsome, English. All little girls I know have daddies. I wish I had one. We could wish together, dear. Well, I'm sorry she's not at home. Could you tell me where I can get in touch with her? Well, I'm afraid you can't this evening. You see, I'm most anxious to see her. I have something personal of hers I wish to return. Oh? Who's calling, please? Professor Stevenson, Alex Stevenson. Will you tell her I telephoned? Thank you. Professor Stevenson, hello. Hi, hi. Oh, I beg your pardon. Do you have a sheet of note paper? Thank you. Oh, and may I borrow your pen? Uh, do you have an envelope? Any special size? No, anything at all will do. Uh, that'll save you the trouble of coming back. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Oh, excuse I me. I know. You want me to deliver it for you? No. Do you have a stamp? Why don't you travel by bus? Bus? But there's a stamp machine right over there. Stamp machine? Yes. Yes, you put a dime in the machine and stamps come out. Ah, thank you. I beg your pardon. Oh, good evening. It's very nice of you to do this for me. Uh, we don't stop the special for everyone, you know. It messes up the schedule. Sorry, this is an emergency. That's quite all right. I have to make out an emergency ticket. And, uh, there we are. I'm sorry, but the company's biggest customer borrowed my pen. Do you have one? I think so. Excuse me, I hate to keep bothering you, but thank you. Uh, do you happen to have changed for a quarter? Well, at last, a cash transaction. <laughs> yes, uh, you probably hate me. Not yet, but I'm working on it. No. I don't have any change. Oh? No. Oh, excuse me, but do you happen to have change for a quarter? Oh, I seem to only have two dimes. Oh, that's perfectly all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, uh, you have a nickel change coming. Oh, that's all right. You may owe it to me. You have an honest face. I know what you mean. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no. But that train that's coming in, does it go to Boston? Yes. Then I'd like to buy a ticket to Boston. Please? You don't have to feel obligated. I know, but you've been so nice, I feel I should buy something. I'm sure the company will appreciate it. May I help you? Oh, would you fold this for me, please? Thank you. Next call back. I'll take the bag, sir. Your ticket, please, sir. Fifteen, you're up ahead. Thank you. One, sir? Please. May I borrow an evening paper? Help yourself. Thank you. Right this way. Do you mind? Dining car is rather crowded. Oh. Well, in that case, I suppose... The only place that seems crowded is this table. Oh, well, you see, they have very heavy reservations. Uh, 
I do dislike dining alone on trains, don't you? Well, this always happens when people owe you money. They try to ignore you. They think they'd be kinder to their creditors. Owed me a nickel for quite some time now. I'd hate to have you turn this over to a collection agency. Lettuce and tomato salad, Rockford dressing, New York cut steak, asparagus, cheese and crackers, coffee. How would you like your steak, sir? Steak? I didn't order steak. I did. Blood rare. Tea and toes? Yes. Is that all you wanted, tea and toes? Yes. Oh. Oh. Something wrong? <coughs> But, oh, no, no, nothing at all, really. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Ah, I see we have similar tastes in literature. Well, I'd hardly call this literature. And it's certainly in poor taste. The idea of this man using a prominent woman to exploit himself. It's obviously an attempt to get publicity for a very dull lecture. Dull? <laughs> no doubt they're trying to make a romantic figure of this man, who's probably as dull as the subject he lectures on. What do you mean, dull? Well, he must be. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to try to build him up like this. But listen to this. The women's clubs are anxiously awaiting the arrival of the dashing, handsome young Englishman. Well, that's <laughs> just a... Oh, do they say that about him? I hadn't read that far. Oh, sounds like a rather exciting chap, doesn't he? <laughs> probably a crusty old fossil. Handsome, dashing, young. Perhaps the poor fellow had nothing at all to do with it. Oh, you're English, aren't you? Yes. That's why you're defending him. The idea of this charlatan linking his name to a college dean's to further his own selfish ends. What do you think this woman thinks? Well, she's probably an old spinster who is much too excited to think. What? <laughs> I'll even wager she's a crotchety old maid who spends her evenings looking under the bed. Hoping. <sighs> well, how about it? It ought to be coming in now, miss. Track 17. Come on, boys. If he isn't on this one, I'm a dead pigeon. Let's go. Yeah, help him. Now, perhaps if you eat at places other than on trains, we might meet again sometime. Well, I'm only going to be in Boston a short time, Mr. Oh, I don't even know your name. No, I yours. It... You angel, you bringing all the evidence. And this is Exhibit A. How do you do, Miss Middlecott? I'm Teddy Evans How of the Pomeroy do? Lecture Bureau. Miss Middlecott. I'm so glad you and Professor Stevenson got together. Grab it, boys. Professor Stevenson? Yes. Oh, no. Humorous thing that's ever happened. Excuse me, when is the next train to Benton, Connecticut? If you hurry, you can just make it. Track five. Oh, thank you. Sit in here, Miss Middlecott. That's very nice of you, Conductor. I really don't feel well. Quite all right. I'll call you when we get to Benton. Thank you. It's me, Professor Stevenson. Go away. But Miss Middlecott, if you just let me explain, I, I... I'm not going to talk to you now. Will you please go away? Who is it? Conductor. getting in? In five minutes. Uh, how's your headache? Well, I still have it. It's too bad. You have a headache. Will you please get out of here? Miss Millcott, please allow me to explain. There is nothing to explain, and if you don't get out of here immediately, I'll have you put out. All right, I'll go. But first, I want to give you this. Where did you get this? From Benoit. He was dying. And he asked me if I ever came to America to bring it back to you. He wanted you to have his medals, too. They're in here. And I have a few things of yours which accidentally fell out of your purse. Oh, and Benoit gave me a message for you. He said that he loved you. It 
was the last thing he said. It was? Car keys. I'd have written you, but I didn't have your address. I got it through the jewelers. Lipstick. Memories. Yes, he told me some of them. The little inn near Paris. The table under the mimosa tree. Young French officer, blonde mustache. That's right. Oh, I think I remember him. You think you remember him? He was homesick and wanted to talk with someone. I gave him the locket. He asked for it. Well, you needn't have bothered to bring this all the way back to me. It's only a trinket. I hardly knew him. You hardly knew him? This man was in a prison camp, starved and beaten beyond help when we got to him, and through it all, keeping alive his love for you, the one thing that did live, and you say you hardly knew him. That's right. I hardly knew him. You are the coldest woman I've ever met in my life. Miss Middlecott, I made a sad mistake when I brought you that locket. What I should have brought you was a suit of long woolen underwear. Julia Habit. I uh, got a tip you were coming in from Boston, Professor. Would you uh, care to make a statement about your romance? Yes. Yes, I would. You may say it's been wildly exaggerated. It was worth it. That's enough for this morning, sir. I think you've earned this. You're all right. Nothing like a good workout to make a man hungry. No, sir. No. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Anything else, sir? Yeah, this is plenty of things. Good morning, Maxwell. Good morning. Well, good morning, Dad. Good morning. Well, what's the matter? Something wrong? Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Sleep well? Oh, yes, yes, I always sleep well. Oh. Tell me, how did you find Boston? Still in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's new? I haven't finished it myself yet, dear. No. Over the way. What happened between you and that professor chap? Oh, he, oh, we hit it off beautifully. You did? Uh, yes, we uh, we came to a definite understanding. Oh, <laughs> tell me, was he belligerent about it? No, no. Oh. I certainly had to put him in his place, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll link our names together again. Ah. What sort of a chap was he? Like the papers described? Oh, I don't know, Father. You know, I really didn't pay much attention. He seemed to be the usual run-of-the-mill scientist. Glasses, and he had a beard, and he... Oh. Huh? I guess he shaved just before that picture was taken. Oh, good heavens. Oh, this is terrible. Well, something will have to be done about this. Well, before doing anything, dear, I suggest you fix your hair and straighten your story. Oh, Susan, Susan. Just a minute, dear. 
You don't want to leave without your weapons, do you? Matthews, will you please tell Dean Middlecott to call me as soon as she reaches her office? Yes, Dr. McFall. I know it. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Middlecott. Oh, please, please. please. Uh, Laura. Come in. Well, who are those people and what do they want? The two reporters want a statement. The young woman says you have something that belongs to her. And Professor Simone wants to defend your honor. Oh, no. And Dr. McFall wants you to phone him at once. Shall I get him for you? No, no. I'll talk to him a little later. Bring those people in, one at a time. I'd like to talk to Miss Middlecott. We'd like a story and some more pictures, Miss Middlecott. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where is he, Miss Middlecott? Professor Simon, shouldn't you be at class? But I was so worried for you. Why did you sock him? I want an immediate retraction of that ridiculous story. Okay, Miss Middlecott, you just tell us what to say. I repeat, where is he? There isn't anything to say. I don't know where he is. It says he on the paper. Is it true you had dinner with him last night? I don't even know the man. But you did have dinner with him. Yes, but I don't know him. Well, do you usually have dinner with people you don't know? No. Shall I go? Yes. Well, which is it, yes or no? Who is it? It's Dr. McFall. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, Dr. I McFall. I repeat, what did you do with him? I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't think you know either. Not you, Dr. McFall. No. Is it true that you both came back in the same compartment? No. But the conductor said... I could challenge him to a duel. Oh, I wish you'd stop being so 18th century. No, no, not you, Dr. McFall. And you tell that paper of yours if there are any additional pictures and any subsequent additions, I'll call my lawyers. Now get out of here. Get out of here, all of you. Go on. Get... Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Dr. McFall. I'm not going to leave this room until you tell me what you did with Professor Stevenson. Uh, would you excuse me just one more minute, Doctor? I do not know Professor Stevenson. I don't know where I he is. I suppose he found you your locket in a box of Cracker Jack. What do you know about my locket? Well, I know he had it. I know you must have given it to him. I know that the first thing he did when he came to America was look you up. Far be it for me to meddle in anyone's private life. But we can't sell tickets. Past Hello? Oh, excuse me, Dr. McFall. Yes? Who? Professor Stevenson, just a moment. I also know that you're the reason for blowing his lectures. Now, who is it? Professor Stevenson calling on, too. Well, I don't want to talk to him. Oh, well, I do. Get, Listen, get, get. honey, I'm supposed to be taking care of you. Oh. All I want to know is, is you is or is you ain't my baby? What? For your information, that was not Professor Stevenson on the phone. That was Dr. McFall, the president of this college. Oh. Well, I guess now I'll never get my diploma. Good morning. Nice color, isn't it? Yes, yes. What is it? Pink past. I use demon red myself. There we are. Now, if you want anything, just holler. I'll be with you in a minute, hon. Let's keep these curtains closed. Can you imagine her socking that good-looking Englishman? What do you expect? <laughs> Have you seen these pictures? Listen to this. Dean scores in both ends of double header. Professor Alexander Stevenson, the British astronomer, saw some new stars yesterday, and persistent rumors of his romance with Benton's Dean Middlecott were given a boost. The lady scored a one-round TKO in a lover's quarrel with a man whom she has hitherto described as a perfect stranger. <laughs> My roommate said the Dean should worry less about classwork and more about homework. <laughs> An old maid like that should try to get a man and not kill him. Isn't that right, Nancy? I'll say it is. Uh, no, I mean... I mean, I'll say it isn't. Hurry up, will you? I gotta go. Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 Goldie! Oh! 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 Ah! Ah! Goldie! Come here! Help! Come here! Somebody! Oh! Ah! What's happening? Miss Middlecott. Oh, Miss Middlecott! Miss Middlecott! Miss Middlecott! What happened? Excuse me, do you have any Empire Ovals? Oh, did, did you say Empire Ovals? Yes, they're cigarettes. Oh. oh, oh, we're out of them. We've always been out of them. That is, 
We never had them. I see. Did you ever try shaking cocktails in this thing? Good morning. Is Professor Stevenson registered here? Yes, ma'am. Is he in? You'll find the house phones right around the corner, miss. Thank you. Uh, Professor Stevenson, please. Professor Stevenson left his room a few minutes ago. He did? You might try the Middlecott residence. They just sent a car for him. How do you know? Excuse me, ma'am. Mm, Grandma, what big ears your switchboard has. Well, take variable stars. Algol, for instance. Now, Algol's periodic change of brilliance yes, is... I know. Over a period of two days and 21 hours, Algol goes through a change of more than one magnitude and a surprising change of brightness. You didn't expect that, did you? No. no. <laughs> you see, we have something in common. I'm an amateur astronomer, very interested in it. But right now, I'm much more interested in you and Susan. Well, I've told you everything. That's all there is. Oh, of course, it's too bad that two nice people like you, who should get together, get together, and then don't get together. Mm. No, no, thank you. Well, you see, your daughter isn't very get together a bull. Uh, one might say she's a bit of an icicle. Oh, well, that shouldn't stop you. You know what the Greek philosophers say about icicles? Today's icicle may be tomorrow's hot water. Father, well, I've had quite a morning. You! Now, what are you doing here? I invited him. You invited him? Father, you don't seem to realize this man has caused me great embarrassment. And if the press find out he's in this house... The professor's told me the whole story, Susan. He's not responsible for those pictures and the papers. Oh, no? no? I suppose I am. Well, the choice of pose was yours. Father, don't you understand that everything that's happened has been planned? This man carries his own publicity agent with him. He hires someone to arrange situations like this. And his presence here is decidedly unwelcome. I only asked him up for a little sherry. I'll leave after the sherry. Yes, it's a great pleasure to me to have a fellow astronomer as my guest. I was hoping he could stay for lunch. Lunch? Just tea and toast? We're not having lunch today. Oh, Mother, I'm so glad you're home for lunch today. Rendezvous? Grandpa told me all about you. He did? Yes, he said you were young, handsome, and English. He did? Yes. He said that you were going to be my new daddy. He did? <clears throat> uh, Louisa, run along and play, dear. Alice is waiting. Uh, go on, go on, Louisa. Well, this is the end. All morning I've been besieged by news reporters, by female press agents, by college presidents, and by French professors who want to defend my honor. And now my own child looks at a perfect stranger and calls him daddy. Father, I insist Professor Stevenson leave this house. If he doesn't, I will. Oh, Alice. I've decided to go to the lodge tonight and to take Louisa with me. Would you get her things together, please? Yes, Miss Middlecott. You stay out here and play, Louisa. Yes, ma'am. I think it's best that I leave. I'm sorry your daughter's been upset by this, but, you know, actually, the publicity's been embarrassing for me, too, you know. Well, I'll go with you. Good, then we'll have lunch at the end. Yes, sir. Oh, I have a better idea, Professor. As long as you have nothing definitely planned for this weekend, I have a little observatory I'd oh, like have you to you? see. Yes, yes. Of course, I know how you professionals feel about it. Oh, amateurs. I'd like to see it. You would, oh, really? Yes, Good. Really. It's in our place in the mountains. Oh, what beautiful flowers. Did you grow them? No, Mommy. They grew themselves right outside. Well, if you're going to play hostess, I think perhaps you'd better sit here at the head of the table. Oh, sit there. There we are. I love camping out like this. Well, I wouldn't call this camping out exactly. Are we having potluck tonight? Now, where did you hear that? Alice and the cook always says they're having potluck. I wish you'd make it sometime. Well, I can try. Susan! 
Well, well, this is a coincidence. I wonder. Mm, we came up here to get away from you. I saw the lights on outside. Father, but I didn't you're not it. staying. Oh. Mommy, Mommy, I'll put on two extra plates. Uh, no. I just love company. Oh, we can't There's walk no... home. I sent the car back. Well, you can use mine. Oh, my dear, you know I don't drive. <laughs> Professor, you could no, take... I the... don't drive either. Well, now, there isn't enough food. Just tea and toast? Is that all you ever eat? Blood rare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I... One jack. Uh, you miss. Well, I'm afraid it's much too strenuous for me. Well, it looks as if it's a little too strenuous for you too, Louisa. I think it's the hostess's bedtime. Bedtime? This is very humiliating. Well, come on now. Oh, well. Ah. Say la vie. That's French. Oh. Come on, Grandpa. You have to undo me. Oh, this is very humiliating. <laughs> you have a delightful daughter, Miss Middlecott. Thank you. I adopted her in France after the war. You alone? Well, technically, I had no right to being unmarried, but I just couldn't resist Louisa. Well, how did you work it? Oh, I sent a letter to the commanding officer requesting that the legal procedure be set aside in her case. And he did? No, no. She did. The next morning, being the commanding officer, I granted the request. Oh. Well, I think it's admirable. And very clever of you, indeed. Mm -mm. Oh, excuse me. Oh, thank you. That's your compact. Comb, lipstick, car keys. I have a strange feeling I've been through this before. Well, it was all a ridiculous misunderstanding. Yes, let's leave it at that, shall we? Well. Good. Now, this place reminds me of my own lodge in Scotland. It's very comfortable and isolated. Well, that's why we have it, to get away from people. Nobody bothering us. That's why I have mine, to keep people from bothering us. Oh, I mean my dogs and my guns. And the things a man takes with him on a weekend. It's the sort of place one can be completely together alone. You'd love it. You really would. It's, it's living without the routine of living. Well, what's the matter with the routine of living? I think a person is happy who has an organized life. Are you happy with yours? Well, of course. It's, it's neat. Practically and... antiseptic. But it's busy and full. Yes, with other people's lives. It's secure. And comfortable. Oh, but you're much too young to be comfortable. You know, you amuse me. I do? Looking at me through a mental telescope and seeing things that aren't really there. Oh, they're there, all right. Perhaps nobody ever studied you thoroughly before. Uh, the fire, it's getting lower. Please, let me. You know, when your father asked me to come up here, I accepted quickly. Perhaps too quickly. I suppose subconsciously I'd hoped you'd be here. Why? Because of fires that need kindling. That shouldn't have happened, Professor. Well, as an astronomer, I can say that it was written in the stars. Professor, but I must say good night. I'm riding in the morning and some friends are picking me up early. Well, from the looks of things, you don't seem to be making any progress. Well, I've broken through the outer defenses, but the fortress is still standing. Oh. But don't give up, lad. Just because there's a little snow on the roof, doesn't mean there isn't any fire in the house. Well, are you going to show me your observatory? Oh, right now. Come on. What do you suppose makes Susan so indifferent to men? Another man, perhaps? Perhaps. Well, 
streamlined and modern in every respect. Yes, she certainly is. A sample of my efforts. Put it together myself. Oh, oh nice job. Uh, Mr. Middlecott, about your granddaughter. A little cracked when I first got her. What? No, no, I mean Louisa. How old is she? Uh, Louisa? Oh, she's six years old. Six years old? Mm-hmm. Well, did it ever occur to you that she might not be adopted? What do you mean? I mean about Susan and this French officer, the one she gave the locket to, you know, the mimosa tree episode. They could be married, you know. No. No, Susan would have told me. Maybe not. In her position as commanding officer, and he a soldier in another army, perhaps it was better that nobody knew. But Susan and I have always been so close. Besides, she might have been hurt by it. Badly hurt. See, when he left her, he was in the concentration camp. And she might have thought that he deserted her. Well... And rather than endure the humiliation when the child was born, it might have been easier for Susan to say that she adopted her. It explains a lot, you know. The wall she's built around herself. You could be right. Maybe you are right. Oh, but wouldn't you think Susan could trust me? I wouldn't have told anybody. Well, you know, women are strange, but I have no doubt Susan would have told you when the proper time came. Yes, I'd like to think she would. Please. Why can't we adopt him like you adopted me? You always say that you had your choice of lots of children, and you took me. Why can't you choose him for a new daddy? Darling, you just don't adopt a husband. Well, why not? We have a year to try him out in, and if he doesn't work, we'll send him back to the agency. We're happy, just the two of us. Aren't we, darling? I think we'd be happier if we adopted a husband. No, how do I look? Like an unmade bed. Oh. Gee, I can't understand it. It fits me perfectly. Well, I suppose I must have a peculiar figure. No, actually, it's not too bad. As a matter of fact, it gives you an air of studied carelessness. Oh? Yes. Well, if you're going riding, you better get a move on. Yes. Well, I can only hope the horse has a sense of humor. Yep. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Well, I'm ready. Really? For what? Oh, you always dress like this for breakfast? This is a riding habit. Oh, really? I thought it was white tie and tails. You're going riding then? But yes. I'm so sorry, Alec. I almost forgot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You just don't seem to be able to wear clothes well. <laughs> well, anyway, shall we go? We? Oh, you, you want to go riding with me? Well, naturally, you said last night you were riding with some friends this morning, so I thought I'd join you if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. I don't think it's a good idea at all. I've had a difficult enough time explaining you as it is. But that's all over now. I do wish you would. Be. There they are. Oh. Come along. Nice, brisk candor before breakfast every morning. Now, Professor, Professor, I don't want any further trouble with you. There'll be no trouble. I've been writing for years, and besides, we can be together. But, uh, uh... We can... <laughs> Margaret, 
Do you remember what I was telling you about last night? Yes. Well, there he is. The horses are here and they brought their bicycles. Oh, girls. Girls, I uh, want you to meet Professor Stevenson. Girls? She's using the word loosely. Professor Stevenson is the famous English astronomer and one of the world's ten best-dressed men. You still want to ride with us, Professor? Well, really, I, I don't think I'm dressed for the occasion. Well, you're not dressed for any occasion, but don't let that stop you. I think it'd be fun to have him, don't you, girls? Oh, oh we love, love it! it. We love it! We love it. Really, Miss Middlecott, I don't think I'd better go. I haven't been on a bike since I was a boy. And besides, you don't have one for me, do you? I do have one for you, and I insist now you come along. You may have your choice. How about this old one of mine? Well, it doesn't look very sturdy. Well, perhaps you'd prefer this one. Well, I guess we're ready. Riders, mount! Well, why don't you get on? It's a girl's bike. Try and side saddle. Come on, Professor. Don't Thank you, Professor. Professor. Professor? Yes, rather. thing tamed now. Oh, oh! Uh, pull me, pull me. Uh, uh, oh. Leo, I'm just going to settle down and enjoy the ride. I don't see what else can possibly happen. Stevenson, a man of your reputation, lying there in the gutter. Something seems to have happened to your bike. Shall we shoot it and put it out of its misery? Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Oh? Come along. <laughs> You're not in very good condition, are you? No, I, I was until I started on this Alpine trek. What was that? I'm not sure, but I oh. think one of my lungs just exploded. <laughs> well, how do they feel now? I don't think I'll ever be able to walk again. Perhaps I should have put you on the handlebars. I suppose you think you could have pedaled the bike up that hill? Oh, I wouldn't have tried to pedal it. I'd have used the motor. You'd have used the what? The motor? <laughs> I think I'll kill myself. No. No, I have a better idea. <laughs> that thing had a motor and you didn't tell me and you made me pump and pump and pump. Now, Professor, control yourself. Don't you come near me. Do you have any idea how it feels to be spanked hard? <laughs> Ow! Yes, it feels something like that. You pushed me. Don't move. Don't touch those leaves. Why not? Poison ivy. Oh! Don't be frightened. I'll take care of it. Oh! Oh! Now what? Oh! Oh! Oh, this is awful. Oh, I'm starting to itch. I'll break out in blotches all over tonight. And tonight's the prom. What are you doing? A little commando trick I learned during the war. You make a poultice of mud. 
and you spread it thickly on the skin to counteract the affected areas. Oh. Oh, well, all right. Hurry it up. Hurry up. My poultice, you'll never break out. Oh. Uh, Professor, my hands were in the ivy, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that oh, takes care of me. Oh, poor little face, no. There. I'm sure that takes care of me, Professor. You think we've covered everything? Oh, yes, my face, my hands, my legs. Those were the only parts that were touched when I sat, when I sat with my hands. Oh, there you are. Oh, the professor was just patting my poison ivy. Poison ivy? Yes, I, uh, I fell in that clump right over there. Why, Susan, that's not poison ivy. That's a harmless foliage, species Parthenocystis quenquifolia. Riders, mount! <clears throat> well, <laughs> botany was my worst subject. Oh, you poor boy. May I have this dance? Jerome, away, away, away. We've got work to do. How about you, Rita? Oh, no. <laughs> Here we are. It'll all be nice of you to send for us. But Susan insisted. Thank you, Professor. This must be a national pastime. You know, our readers have been wanting to see what you look like without a handbag on your face. Go away, boy. Go away. Now, you run along and find Susan. All right. I know she'll be glad to see you. I'll take care of Miss Evans. Tell me. A gay party for a small college, don't you think? Education is a wonderful thing. No school should be without it. Huh. Are you a college girl? Uh, no, I went to finishing school. That is, finishing school for girls. Preparatory for boys. <laughs> Good evening. Well, Professor Simon, why aren't you dancing? Well, I would, dear. Oh, but... Susan. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Martha. I see you still have your poison ivy. Oh, you're wrong. I'm completely cured. I wonder. I think you wouldn't want to be seen with that man. Well, I don't want to be seen with him. He seems to be looking for you. But he's not going to find me. How about it, honey? Would you care to dance? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Dean Wilcott. <laughs> you, you wouldn't like to dance, though, would you? <laughs> well, no, no, thank you. I, I... But, uh, let's go in the garden. Garden? You and me? Holy cow. But look, Dean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Well, tell me all about yourself. Did you bring a girl? No, ma'am. I came stag. I can't seem to get myself a dame. A girl. Well, I know just how you feel. Yeah, I guess you do. You're an older woman. And... But, well, who's an older woman? You are, aren't you? Well, uh, I am not. I mean, uh, I'm not any older than any other woman my age. Well, what I meant was that, well, you're a dean, and, and well, you must be solving kids' problems all the time. Yes. Well, right now, I'm working on one of my own. Um, shall we sit here for a little while? Everything happens to me. Well, uh, you shouldn't have any problem. You're a very attractive boy. Boy, boy, I'm a man. Shh. Can't you feel my chin? Uh, oh, yes, I just did. Oh, we'll, we'll feel the cheek. Oh. <laughs> Rough, huh? Uh, not at all. Just as smooth as silk. This is a beard. Oh, oh, is it? Oh. Everybody calls it fuzz. Oh, my dad won't even let me shave. Shh. He's got a whole mess of razors, and he won't even let me touch one. Oh, a razor miser, eh? <laughs> well, what sort of razor do you plan to use? Electric. Oh, are you, are you AC or DC? Oh. 
Uh, how'd you like to dance? No, no, thank you. I'd rather not dance right now. Huh. Don't you think we ought to leave this, leave the bench for the smoochers? <laughs> oh, I haven't noticed many uh, smoochers. But I'm happy to see that there isn't as much smooching nowadays as there was when I went to school. Oh, there's just as much. <laughs> Only a different crowd's getting it. <laughs> You don't have to twist my arm. You cradle snatcher, you. Holy cow. Cal, didn't I read somewhere that there was no room for romance in your career? Don't be ridiculous. I was merely trying to hide from you. You've succeeded in embarrassing me before my colleagues. Now you insist upon doing so in front of my students. Why did you come here tonight? Well, you invited me. Your father said oh, that... Oh, father. And besides, it's my last night and I, I wanted to say goodbye. Good. Consider it said. Oh, please. Not like that. I'm here now and just one dance. I never dance at these affairs. Just one dance? Well, will you leave right after it's over? I give you my word. Oh, hello. Nice to see you again. Uh, riders mount. You know, I don't know why Ellie kept you such a secret. Oh, you know how men are. They're so possessive. Well, hello. Oh, you found her. May I cut in? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, you see, this is my final performance. The curtain can't ring down too soon. Oh, come now. I've made you the bell of the ball. Here. Give me that photo. Oh, no, this is going to give me a bonus. I wanted this minute. Now, give me it. Oh, dear. How did you get over there in the first place? Look here. How did you get this thing out of there? Don't, don't expose that film. Excuse me. Excuse me. You all right? Father, I'm all right. Thanks. You can give him back his camera. Susan, let me through this, Susan. Let me through. Susan, what's the trouble? I want this man put out of here at once. Boys, get this man Never out Never mind. Here. I'll take care of him. Come along. Susan, what in the world? I'm terribly sorry, Dr. McFall. This incident is most regrettable, and I owe you an apology. I'm afraid I owe you all an apology. But there's been so much publicity, so many misstatements, that I couldn't allow it to go any further. The articles that you've read in the newspaper concerning Professor Stevenson and myself are inaccurate in every respect. I want you to know that my heart belongs only to Benton College. I want you to know, too, that I'm terribly proud of this graduating class. And I want you to be proud of me. So will you please forgive me for interrupting your party now and, and go back to your dance, will you? Father, please go on with your dance. I'm sorry, Dr. McFall. May I have my wrap, please? Yes, sir. I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid I've done it again. I think you can see if you hadn't come here, I wouldn't have to go through all this. I know, but I won't be troubling you anymore. Tomorrow I'm taking a train out of your life. But I don't want to spoil your evening. Please don't leave. I think it's best. Then may I take you home? No, I'd rather you wouldn't. I have my own but car. But I insist. Oh, dear. Our father has the keys. Would you be good enough to get them? Oh, I'll be glad to. Thank you.
Help you, ma'am? Oh! Oh, you scared me to death. Oh, no, no, I seem to have misplaced my car key somewhere. I can't even imagine. Feel anything? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing down here but grass. Well, let's leave it here, shall we? Oh, excuse me. Do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you a car? Yes, ma'am. Where is it? Over there. Oh, well, do you mind taking me home? But, look, Miss, Miss Middleton. Oh. I... Now, look, Dean, I don't think we should go on with this. Oh, I promise to be good. I lost my head before. The moon, the music. It was a moment of madness. Now, where's your car? Right over here. Oh. Lovely car you have. Yes, ma'am. It's a honey. Where are you going? My car. Do you mean this? Oh. 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 oh, this is your car? Yes, ma'am, the first one. Oh. What is that dreadful smell? That's my tail. Your what? My raccoon tail. Oh. Well, you never should have cut it off. <laughs> oh. oh, I forgot to tell you, the door comes off. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh! Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I should have warned you. There's there's no, no floorboard. floorboard. Would you like some music? I, I have a radio. Television or nothing. Home, Jerome. Birds like a kitten, huh? Yeah, wildcat. Another one? You're not flashing that souped-up scrap pile with my atomic racer, are you? Atomic racer? You take that thing over 10 miles an hour, it'll fall apart. Oh, yeah? Well, you won't be around to see it. I won't, huh? I'll be up ahead waiting for you. Yeah! Don't race! Get me out of here! Oh! I'm sorry I started the whole thing. Your car is better than his. Uh, now let it go with that. Oh! Let me out of this car. Just as soon as we pass that guy. Well, you'll travel faster alone. Hey, what are you doing? My, my tail. You can grow another one. Oh! oh. Let me out of this car at once! We'll get him. Cut it out, Dean. Cut it out. Oh! Now why? My scarf! Immediately! Gosh, Dean, I'm almost on him. Oh. oh! Oh! Oh, Dean, you ain't helping my wind resistance, any.
Hate to interrupt this little motor tour, but you kids know that Hello, you can't officer. drive. Oh, well, you? officer, we were uh, on home. our way to my house. Never and, mind. Uh, uh, just let me see your license. Now, please don't be too severe on this young man. He was merely driving me home. I'm Dean Middlecutt of Benton College. Oh, yeah? I'm Little Red Riding Hood of Public School 22. Well, I can just picture the dean riding around in a hot rod. Oh, well, you see, it's his. It's not mine. I mean, uh... Don't seem to have it. I guess I must have left it in another suit or something. Oh. You been drinking? Just a little punch. A little punch with a kick in it, huh? How about you, Princess? We can dispense with the sarcasm, officer. I'm trying to tell you that I am Dean Middlecutt. What's up, Charlie? Oh, uh, there's a man who'll know me. He can identify me. I was just trying to tell the officer that I am Dean... Just a minute. Don't mind throwing him any hints. I'll ask him. What's with this girl? She's trying to tell me she's the dean of the college. You know her? Why, she's screwy. I never saw this babe before in my life. What? Why, you... But this will make a nice story. Young boy and unidentified woman in hot rod spree. Oh! Thanks, Charlie. And be careful with her. She looks awful dangerous. <laughs> yeah, you better come along with me. Can't go with that officer. I've got to get that picture. I... Open your mouth. Huh? Close it, close it. Oh, officer, I'm afraid we won't be able to follow you after all. We seem to have lost the key to the ignition. So if you'll go to the nearest gas station and phone the college, they'll send someone over immediately to identify me. All right, come on, get out. Huh? Both of you, get out, please. You know, lady, you must think I was born yesterday. Say you lost your key. Well, maybe I can help you find it. I'm pretty good at that, you know. So you lost your key, huh? Officer, those are the keys to my car. Yeah. That's the reason I'm in this car. Uh -huh. And if you could only get that through it your... It better not fit in here, lady, or I'm going to get awful mad at you. Of course it won't fit in there. They're the keys to my car. How can they possibly fit in... Couldn't possibly. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, I can't get, get. Holy cow! Oh, Jerome! I'm all right, Father. Just send the car, please. To the police station. No, 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 no. I was just picked up with a young boy and his hot rod. That's a car. I tell you, I'm fine, Father. Now send the car, please. I'm awfully sorry about this, Dean Middlecutt. I wish you'd let me send you home in a police car. That won't be necessary. Thank you. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about the key. You're young. You can digest anything. Just made it. That diddly dad burn motor died. I'm surprised it lived this long. Hello. Hi. Who are you? Well, who are you? I'm Louisa. Are you going in to see my mommy? Who's your mommy? She's Miss Middlecott. Miss Middlecott? I also have a new daddy. He just got here from England. Your new daddy? I never saw him until she brought him back from Boston. I've just been hit with a horseshoe. Uh, goodbye, Louisa. And I found a new angle. Now get this. Miss Susan Middlecott has a daughter. Get it? Miss Middlecott. And her daughter just told me that Alex Stevenson is her father. Teddy, you've been drinking. Not yet, I haven't. But this is a scoop that's going to be celebrated in vintage wines. Hello, Merle. This is Pearl. I'm going to let you listen in on something. And if this doesn't send you, you've got no place to go. Hello, Earl. This is Pearl. Listen, keep your ear to that phone. I want you to hear something. And if you got your hat on, take it off, because this will knock it off. Well, of course it's startling news, but you can't print that an unmarried woman of such prominence as Dean Middlecott has a baby. I don't care who the father is. It's libelous. Yeah, I guess you're right, boss. But that would really have blurred the ink. Well, I guess I'll have to find another angle. Well, keep in touch with me. Okay. Hello, Merle. This is Pearl. Well, that ought to put a curl in your hair. Carl, it gave me a permanent. 
Hello, Earl. This is Pearl. How about that? Juicy. Have you heard the latest? No. Well, they say that... John? No. Not Miss Middlecott. Please believe me when I tell you I don't want to be the one to spread gossip about Susan and her baby, but it's already all over town. Well, you can't keep a thing like that hush-hush. I should say you can't. That's all the students are talking about, from one end of the campus to the other. It's terrible, isn't it? Just listen. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been so excited in all my life. Why, this is more thrilling than the biology class. <laughs> yes, but if my folks ever hear about it, I'll be yanked out of Benton so fast. Why? Well, how broad-minded can you be? <laughs> That's the one I got last night, Chief. The dean, the boy, and the hot rod. Then, when I got the tip, I beat it out the middle cut place, and I snapped the kid. What a story. I even got the headline. Child of distinction. With a big question mark. Get it? <laughs> Third thing I ever heard is fantastic, and I won't be humiliated further. Well, Susan, coming at this time, graduation week, with the students and the faculty and the parents all talking. And what right have they to talk? You're not the only one concerned. Benton has a fine reputation, and it shouldn't be jeopardized by scandal, regardless of how erroneous it may be. Well, you just call the board meeting, and I'll clear this thing up once and for all. It's a wise move, Susan. Can I come? I don't want to miss anything. I think you should be there. After all, your daughter's reputation. His daughter's reputation is above reproach. I'll be in my office in 15 minutes. Thank you. Susan. Come in, Father. Susan, I must have a little talk with you. This is not the time for conversation. No, but I want you to know that I understand the whole thing. What whole thing? I know Alex Stevenson is not Louisa's father, but I also know she isn't adopted. Father, I have the adoption papers in this box. I know Benoit was very... Benoit? Now, what brought his name into this? Well, Alec and I were discuss... Oh, Alec. Now, Susan, you don't need to continue this act with me any longer. Here they are, Father. Yes, they certainly are. Well, all I can tell you is I'm very, very disappointed. Why? Well, I guess I wanted to believe that story about Benoit. Yes. But, Susan, don't you realize this is a great opportunity for you? Opportunity? Yes. To be ridiculed by the entire community? To have to defend myself against baseless lies to the college board? No, I didn't mean that. I meant the opportunity to become a woman. I am a woman. No. You look like a woman, but that's where the resemblance ends. You talk like an encyclopedia. You think like a dictionary. You have all the emotion. Why don't you tell that board to go to... No. No, of course, you couldn't do that. I could, though. I... No, I guess I couldn't either. Now, but Susan, here's a chance for you to go after the man you love. The man I love? You deny it? Well, of course I deny it. He means absolutely nothing to me. Who doesn't? Why, Professor Stevenson. Who said anything about him? You did. You just said I was in love with him. I did not. You said well, that... I said... <laughs> <laughs> Susan, do you want to end up a spinster, an old maid? You know my theory about that. Yes, and you know my theory about your theories. I'm tired of doctrines and theses and rigid schedules and self-denials and wooden women for daughters. You've only got one life to lead. Why do you want to lead it in this emotional straitjacket? But you trained me for this. I did not. I gave you every possible advantage. The best schools, Europe in the summer. Because I like spoiled women. I like them. They're more feminine. And because I thought that with education, clothes, reasonably good looks and my money, you'd bring home a man. But did you? No, oh no. You brought home diplomas, degrees, uniforms. Instead of coming home with a man on your arm, you came home with stripes on your arm. I'm sorry, Father, to disappoint you. 
I thought you'd be proud of my record. you listen to your heart for once, not your head. It's getting late, Father. We'd better go. Come in, bellboy. I'm almost ready. You can take my luggage in a minute. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. You must be in the wrong room. You are Professor Stevenson, no? Yes, I'm Professor Stevenson. Uh, then I'm in the right room. Oh, well, uh, what can I do for you? I'm Simone, Paul Simone, the French department at Benton College. Well, how do you do? I've come to see you on a very delicate matter. Miss Middlecott. Susan Middlecott? She's far from delicate. No, but the situation she is in is very delicate. You see, there is a story going around that you are the father of her daughter, and it is perfectly possible but that... And the what? The father of her daughter. But that's absurd. How could a story like that get about? Well, you ought to know, monsieur. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm not the father of her child. But uh, you could be, couldn't you? It's a little late. No, I mean, Miss Middlecott means a great deal to me. She has been, unfortunately, like a sister to me. That I can understand. And I wouldn't even like to see my sister in a situation like this. The college board is meeting. She may be asked to resign. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I realize how much her career means to her. But there's nothing I can do. Oh, but you could, monsieur. Oh? You could say that you two are married and then there would be no more scandal about the child. But I couldn't do that. I can't go around saying I'm the father of other people's children. It, it just isn't done, old boy. Oh, monsieur. One tiny white lie. And then, then you could be on your way and everybody would be happy. No, I, I'm sorry. Susan Middlecott is a woman quite able to take care of herself. Now, you take my advice, Professor. You go back to your French classes, and I'm sure she can handle the situation. You Englishmen are so gallant. Susan, I want facts. A statement must be made to end this gossip for the sake of the school. And that statement must be backed up by facts. Well, that's precisely what I'm going to give you. I have here... Please. Please excuse this intrusion, but I know the purpose of this meeting, and if you grant me a few moments, I'm sure I can clarify the situation. Susan? I think I am perfectly capable of clarifying the situation myself. Yes, I know, but since I'm the cause of the misunderstanding, I feel honor bound to help clear it up. Perhaps it might expedite matters. I think it's a little late for explanations from Professor Stevenson. Well, not if you allow me to tell the whole story. The whole story? The whole story. Well, this, there's nothing to hide, is there? Well, of course not. Well, then. To do so, I must take you to France during the war. Uh, must you start there? Well, that's when I first entered the picture, wasn't it? Yes, unfortunately. It's an old story. Wounded officer, pretty American girl, warm summer evenings, moonlight, sipping brandy under a mimosa tree. Uh, I hardly knew this man. Uh, well done. I uh, beg your pardon, Susan? Well, I mean, uh, he was wounded and I was nursing him back to health. Yes, and having a wonderful time. Romance in the budding. One night he asked her for something and she gave it to him. Uh, my locket. Yes, and chain. The romance blossomed into love and soon, soon they were married. What? She literally what? carrying him to the little chapel in Normandy. How on earth can you say such a thing? I was very weak. You? Uh, we were married and spent our wedding night under that same mimosa tree near the little chapel in Brittany. Brittany? You just said you were married in Normandy. Oh, no, no. What I really meant was, 
that Louisa, the child, was born in Normandy. Louisa then. was born in Saint Tropez. Oh, darling, you don't remember. You were sick and confused. Me? I wasn't even there. <sighs> Father, yeah. this man is insane. Professor Stevenson, if this is your idea of a joke, you've chosen the wrong time for levity. Yes. Yes, I suppose I have. Well, I'm sorry. Good morning. Sue, <laughs> can't you understand what he's trying to do? Now that it is understood that Professor Stevenson is not the father of your child, you might tell us who is. Pardon, please. I must speak. I must speak. All over tongues are wagging, and they are wagging a lie. Gentlemen, why did Miss Middlecott bring me to this country? Because she wanted to learn to speak French. No, because I have lots of money. <laughs> no, because I'm young and handsome. No, she brought me to this country because I'm her husband. I'm the father of her child. I never did you such an island and I. I appreciate what you're doing, but you're just 30 seconds too late. Professor Stevenson has already claimed that distinction. He did? Why, well, it's a man you think. And of course, if he's the father of the child, I cannot be. No, Can you I? can't. Why, that solves everything. Not for me, it doesn't. As president of this college, I demand to know what this is all about. It ought to be obvious that both gentlemen are just being gentlemen. Neither is my husband nor the father of Louisa. This is hardly the time for gallantry. I want facts. I have no alternative. I must ask for your resignation unless you have the means of proving this gossip is false and unfounded. I thought I had your complete confidence. But evidently my work, my years of service are to be jeopardized because of idle gossip. Some rumors that have no foundation whatsoever. Facts. Facts. Well, here are your facts. No. No. I'm tired of doctrines and theses and rigid schedules and... and... Self-denials. And self-denials. You don't have to ask for my resignation. You've got it. I never See, dreamed she'd do such an island. I don't know. I don't know. Well... I anticipated quite a different ending to this meeting. And for the child's sake, and to keep the record straight, we do have legal adoption papers. Yes. Look them over. You'll find them in order. Alec. Oh, Alec, I'm so glad I caught you. You're not taking that train out of my life. You're not taking any train. Unless I'm on it with you. That's the first sensible thing I've heard you say. It's time you realize you need a man in your life. You both do. Both? Yes, you and little Louisa. Oh. All this confusion about whose child she is, I've known all along she was yours. You really believe Louisa's my own child? Of course I do. I'm positive. Oh, darling. What a surprise I have for you. <laughs> if you can read French. Here is Louisa's legal adoption papers. Yes, this is a surprise. They're very nice adoption papers, dear. <laughs> <laughs> 